An array is a range of values, whether text or numbers. The scan function processes an array of values. It applies a calculation to that array and returns all the intermediate values of the calculation. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to use the scan function, also called a lambda helper function. Although the definition seems confusing, but with some examples, you will find it very simple. Along the way, you will learn about the reduce function as well. So let's dive in. In this very simple example, I have in column A some characters, A, B, C, D, E. In column B, I would like to create a simple function that combines each character to the character that comes from the cell above. I'm going to assume I have a blank in cell B1. I'll be typing equal double quote double quote, which represents a blank. And then in cell B2, I want to join the blank to the first character in cell A2. Then I type an equal sign. I select the cell above cell B1. I type the joining operator of Excel, which is the end symbol. And then I click on cell A2. When I hit enter, I get A. But when I copy down, I get A and B. When I copy further down, I will find that I'm combining whatever comes from the cell above to the cell to my left. This is exactly what the scan function will be doing. It will be returning all these intermediate values. So in column C, I'm going to create my scan function. So when I type equal scan, and then I hit tab. Well, the scan function requires an initial value. And because I'm using text, then I'm going to use an initial value of double quote, double quote. This is exactly like what I typed in cell B1. I then type a comma. The second argument is the array that the scan function will be processing. The scan function will be processing the array of characters from A2 to A12. I then type a comma. And as I said, the scan function will apply a certain function to each value in this array. And we call it a lambda helper function. So I type lambda. And then I hit tab. The lambda function requires a variable. Why do we use a variable? Because the value that is stored in this variable is going to change as we move from one cell to the next cell. These are the intermediate values of the calculation. I can give my variable any name. And because we have two variables here, the initial value, the blank, let's say I'm going to call it x and then comma, my second variable will be the range that I'll be processing from A2 to A12, and I'm going to call it Y. You can give it whatever abbreviation you like. And then what's the function to be applied? The function to be applied is to join X to the Y. Then I'll be typing X and Shift 7 Y. I close the bracket for the lambda. I close the bracket for the scan. Before I hit Enter, I want you to note that for this cell, the x is the initial value, the blank. But as I go down, the x acquires a new value by looking at the cell above, and so on. So when I hit enter right now, I'm getting the same exact result. Let's see another example in which we use numbers. I go to the next worksheet, and I want to create a running total for the list of numbers I have in column A. So I'll assume that I have an initial value that doesn't change anything if added to the first number because I'm calculating a running total. So I'll be using an initial value of zero. I want to do it manually first, then I type an equal sign. I use the cell above the zero, and I want to add it to the cell to my left, cell A2. When I hit enter, I get 48. But as I copy down, I would have created a running total. Each calculation is adding the cell above to the cell to the left, and I end up by having this number. This is exactly what the scan function will be doing. So I type equal scan. I hit the tab key. What's the initial value? Because I'm using an addition, I'll be using an initial value of zero. And then I type a comma. Where is the array to process? The array is from A2 to A11. I type a comma, and then here comes my lambda function. I type lambda, and then I hit tab. I will be creating two variables, as I did with the previous example, and I can call them x, y. 
The X will be representing the initial value. The Y will be representing each individual cell in the range A2 to A11. Then when I start, the X is zero, but as I go down, the X acquires a new value. These are the intermediate values. And then I type a comma, the last argument of the lambda function is a calculation, and my calculation will be adding the X and Y. Then I type X plus Y. I close the bracket for the lambda, I close the bracket for the scan function, I hit enter, and I'm getting the same exact result. The scan function, returns the intermediate values of the calculation we created. There is a similar function called the reduce function, and the only difference between the scan and the reduce, the reduce function returns the final value. So if I put my function in the edit mode F2, and I replace scan by reduce, now if I hit enter, I get the final result. That's the difference between the scan and the reduce function. Let's see a more advanced example. In this example, I have in column A a list of regions. In each region, we have multiple managers. I can see the names of the managers in column C, and I have the sales amount for each manager in each region. In order to analyze my data, I cannot have these blanks, and I want to fill the blank. There are so many ways of doing that, but I'm going to use the scan function to do it. The concept that I'll be using I will tell the scan function to look at the cell. If it's blank, then copy the value from the cell above. However, if it's not blank, then keep the same value. So I'll be creating my scan function in column F equals scan, and there I hit tab. My initial value will be a blank because I'm dealing with text. I type double quote, double quote, and there I type a comma. Where is the array that you will be fixing? I'm selecting all the range in column A from A1 to A16. I then type a comma and I type my lambda function, lambda, and then I open bracket. I will be providing the two variables as I did before, x comma y. The x will be representing the initial value when I start. And the y represents each individual cell in the range from A1 to A16. As I go down, the x acquires a new value when I apply the calculation. What's your calculation? I need to evaluate each individual cell in the range from A1 to A16. And I type a comma and I write if, if y equals blank, double quote, double quote. If it is blank, get me the value from the cell above. Then I type comma and I type x, otherwise return the y and I type Y. I close the bracket for the if, I close the bracket for the lambda, I close the bracket for the scan function. When I hit enter, I was able to create an entire column of regions without any blanks. I can copy this function. I copy it from the formula bar, control C, and I'm going to build the entire array, maybe in preparation for creating a pivot table. I hit escape, and I go to the next worksheet where I have the same exact setup. The result of the scan function comes in one single column. It includes all the regions, but I want to put it side by side with the manager and sale. That I'll be creating a horizontal stack function. I type equal H stack, and then I hit tab. What would you like to stack? I want my scan function. I paste it at this position, and then I type a comma, and at the end, I would like to stack the manager and sale. Then I select the range from C1 to D16. When I close the bracket and hit enter, I was able to build an entire spilled array that I can use for creating a pivot table. So to create a pivot table from the spilled array, I click on the insert tab, I click on pivot table. I want to create my pivot table in the existing worksheet. I hit OK. Then I drag the manager to the rows. I drag the region to the columns, and I drag the sales to the values, and I would have created my pivot table. You can work on improving the appearance of the pivot table. I showed you different examples for using the scan function. Along the way, we explored the reduce function, which returned the final value returned by the scan function. And if you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel.
to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.